What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. We're here to talk about the latest uh, banning in Pioneer, which came out today. It is Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer uh, is an interesting card to be banned in the Pioneer format. And uh, if you'll if you'll recall, it is the uh, what did we ban last time? Last time we banned Oath of Nyssa, Leyline of Abundance, and Felidar Guardian. So it's actually the third green card out of four cards that have been banned to get banned in pioneer which is pretty insane um it's interesting because it makes me wonder if this card is also going to get banned in standard next week and the reason i'm thinking this is because they banned it in pioneer today and i'm not sure there was enough time between last week and this week to really know if the green decks were overperforming so they might plan on banning it in both standard and pioneer but they couldn't ban it in standard today because the announcement is next week. So they're just going to ban it in Pioneer for now because that's when the Pioneer announcement is. And next week they'll ban it in standard uh, when that announcement is. So they may have made the decision. They're having a discussion about, about Veil of Summer. And they're like, yeah, the card's probably too strong. It probably needs to be banned in standard. We can probably also ban it in Pioneer because the green decks are doing really well there. So we'll just ban it in both. Um, we'll announce the Veil of Summer ban tomorrow in pioneer because that's when it goes out and we'll announce the the standard ban for veil of summer the week after right so i mean i have no idea if that's the case that's just rampant speculation on my part but if it's too strong for pioneer which is inherently a stronger format than standard because you have access to what like six times as many cards uh it feels like it's probably going to be too powerful for standard as well right um and the one thing you've probably heard people calling this card is a green cryptic command. And like cryptic command is one of the strongest cards, I think. And one of the most iconic blue cards in Magic, I think, as well. Um, it's one of my favorite cards. And and people have asked me like what my favorite cards are. Competitively, I think it is Cryptic Command. And casually, I think one of my favorite pet cards is something like Mystic Snake. Mystic Snake is a just a pet card of mine, which is basically a cryptic command that has a, f a fifth mode of making a 2-2, right? You're countering a spell and making a 2-2. So the thing I want to do is counter spells and get value out of them after I do so for four mana. So like Dismiss, Cryptic Command, Frilled Mystic, Mystic Snake. These are a few of my favorite things. These are a few of my... Anyway, so if you look at Cryptic Command... 90% of the time, and like like I was going to say, it it seemed hyperbolic at first to, to call this a green cryptic command for one mana. But if you look at it, cryptic command, I would say something like 90% of the time is countering a spell and drawing a card. You're rarely bouncing things and you're rarely tapping your opponent's team. Are you doing that? Yes, of course. Of course that's going to happen from time to time. But I think the majority of the time... You're bouncing, you're you're countering a spell, and you're drawing a card. Veil of Summer literally does those two things for one mana. It counters a removal spell or a counter spell, and it draws you a card for one mana. And that's really strong. Uh, it invalidates a lot of control strategies. It, it invalidates things like mana leak. It invalidates things like dispel. It invalidates things like spell pierce. So if you go to play your, your planeswalker and they go to spell pierce it, you can go veil of summer. Your spell can't be countered. Um, you know, it invalidates ruinous path and invalidates, you know, murderous rider. You know, swift end, I guess is the other half of that. And like, it just, it makes it very hard for you to deal with these green cards that are already so good. Nissa who shakes the world, Oko, Gilded Goose, Wicked Wolf, Hydroid Crassus, you know, like, I mean, this is just in standard, let alone, let alone in, in, in Pioneer, you know, like, which is, a, like I said, a stronger format where there, where you have your own, um, your own breed of, of, of high-end green threats. And a lot of times you're just casting like Hour of Promise, um, to, to search for two lands and make some zombies, but you know, if you if you literally just play off of curve by one turn, you play your five mana cards when you have six mana. You play your six mana cards when you have seven mana, which isn't terribly hard to do for a green ramp deck. Um, as long as you have something like Veil of Summer in your hand, you can basically resolve whatever you want, and it replaces itself. And it's just not 
like the fact that you're invalidating not only the removal spells and the counter spells I mentioned, but also cards like Thought Seize or Thought Erasure or any kind of card that's keeping these these combo decks in check is um the cards are just too good. Like it's very good. And I think we all know that. We all know it's very good. But like, you know, I think the the crux of what I'm saying here is that if it's too good for Pioneer, I'm pretty sure it's probably too good for Standard. But the thing is, like, if you take out Veil of Summer, do you also take out Teferi, right? Because if you're taking out a card like Oko and you're taking out Veil of Summer, then then the, the question to me that becomes, like, do the Teferi decks start reigning supreme and standard? And I don't know. I think that's a concern. Um, I think Teferi... You know, it's funny because now that the Oko decks, the Simic decks, the Sultai decks uh, are public enemy number one in standard, you don't actually see that many Teferis and Narsets. I don't even think... You know, I, there wasn't a single Teferi or Narset in the top in the top eight of the Pro Tour of the Myth of the Mythic Championship. I'm not sure if there was one in the top sixteen. Uh sixty-three percent of the decks were blue green decks of some variety. And I think that's just uh indicative. I imagine most, if not all of them, had four copies of Ale of Summer. I don't know off the top of my head, but I would be willing to wager that. And uh, I'll definitely be checking after this video, but I mean it's the problem is that the Veil of Summer is just, it's so good against so many strategies. Like, even a even a Teferi is a blue card, right? So if they go to bounce your creature with Teferi, you can... Oh, you guess, I guess you can't Veil of Summer that, right? Because then, ah, uh, yes, you can't Veil of Summer because of Teferi. So you can see why Teferi is just an equally, an equally large scumbag. But you can, in response to them casting Teferi, you can play Veil of Summer. You'll still get to draw your card because they cast a blue spell and they can't actually target uh, your creature. So it, you don't have to do it in response per se, but it does invalidate the, the activation of Teferi and you're still drawing the card for the turn. So, I mean, if, they're, if, they're, if their hope is to play a Teferi, bounce your big creature, let's say a Wicked Wolf or something so you can't attack with it the next turn, um, you get to invalidate that entire strategy by simply playing Veil of Summer in response and then drawing a card and keeping your Wicked Wolf on the board because they can't actually target it with Teferi because of the Hexproof. And, you know, it's just, it... <sighs> the thing is, another thing is, it's funny because Veil of Summer doesn't actually, it counters spells that can't be countered. So if you play something like Oko and your opponent plays Dovin's Veto against it, you can actually play Veil of Summer, draw a card, and then your Oko gets to resolve. Veil of Summer is basically a counter spell that can counter spells that are uncounterable. How many times did I just say counter there? And that's really good. That's really good. It's just, this is a card that gets around so many little things. It gets around so many little caveats that it just shouldn't get around. You know, like, I mean, you know... Oh, God. And the fact that it doesn't say... It says you and permanents you control gain hexproof. It's not just permanents you control. It's not just creatures you control. It's not just planeswalkers. So they can't target your planeswalkers. They can't target you with our discard spell. They can't target your creatures with removal spell. It covers every base possible. And you still get to draw a card. And there's so many ways they could have made this card that would make it just a little less powerful and a little more fair. But it's like every single metric they pushed it on. And it's funny because if you look at the other cycle of these cards, um, like Fry or Noxious Grasp or Aether Gust, uh, Devout Decree, I think it's called, the white one. That's the only one I think I don't know by name. They all cost two mana. Noxious Grasp is black and, and one. Aether Gust is blue and one. You know, Fry is red and one. Veil of Summer is the only one mana card. And it also draws you a card. That's funny. Because if you look at the other perks, Noxious Grasp, you gain one life. Ooh, one whole life. The white one, Devout Decree, I think it's called. You scry one. Ooh, a scry one. Um, the red one, I don't think you get a perk other than it just can't be countered. Is that correct? Maybe? I'm going to look it up right now because I just want to be sure. So we're going to look up Fry. Uh, yeah, it just can't be countered. Deals five damage to a creature or a planeswalker that's blue. So, all of the perks are pretty comical. Scry one on the white one, draw a card on the green one. Gain a life on the black one, draw a card on the green one. And it costs half as much as the other ones. And I just don't, I don't understand, like, why the green one was pushed so much. 
and it's just funny it's just funny because there's so many um there's so many good green cards going around right now both in pioneer and in standard uh that it's almost comical that the green uh the green you know hoser card from m20 is the card that uh that ends up being pushed the most out of the cycle and that's just you know it's kind of comical but um yeah let me know what you guys think of veil of summer being banned in pioneer i think it's a great choice i also think it should or probably will be banned in standard come next monday november 18th so um i'm looking forward to seeing what happens um apologies for the clickbaity title but i do think that banning this today in pioneer uh, might be an indication that it was in discussion. They discussed Veil of Summer, right? Like, in order to ban Veil of Summer and Pioneer, you have to have a dis- discussion about Veil of Summer. And with the results of this past weekend's Mythic Championship, I can't imagine they didn't talk about its implications in Standard. So um, that's where I'm getting my thoughts from. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys think this card is too powerful for Pioneer, too powerful for Standard. If you think it's fine, slam those like and subscribe buttons down below, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.